a unique medium, really. A way of communicating quite unlike any other. For a thousand years, its visual power has been a source of delight and wonder. Stained glass, a way of painting with light. You look at it, through it, at an image that is never still. It changes constantly as you move around it, as the sun moves across the sky, as things move behind the window. It is an ancient art, and a contemporary one. As a craft, it has a rich heritage of techniques which are still preserved and honored by daily use. A large and growing body of artists and craftsmen keep stained glass a living art. Every image begins as a vision in the mind of an artist. The artist must formalize and translate his mental picture into glass if others are to share his vision. And, as in many art forms, the process begins with lines on paper. Robert Hill is one of the foremost designers of stained glass windows in the country. What does a designer think about while he's working? If I'm approaching a traditional design, I'm thinking about symmetry and balance. I'm thinking about lead lines as much as I am color schemes. Um, not always primary color schemes, but colors that will work in relation to each other. Dark against light, textured against non-textured. Um, some colors that are more opaque and some that are more intense. Uh, warm with cool, all of these things go into making what I think could be very nice windows. If I'm thinking about a, a, a creative design, or if I'm working on that, I'm trying not to intellectualize. I'm trying to feel what I'm doing. And I'm depending on my background, my experience, the knowledge of what the limitations of glass are to carry me through. But I'm not intellectualizing about it. I'm putting down a feeling on, on to... Uh, paper to begin with and I'm thinking in terms of glass so that what I'm putting down on paper I know is never going to be a finished piece of artwork but it's a step toward the finished product using the designer's cut line drawing a craftsman will cut the hundreds of pieces of glass which will be assembled into the finished window There is an ancient ritual to the craftsman's approach, to the cutting of each piece of glass. A sheet of the appropriate color is selected and carefully placed on the cut line drawing. The cutting tool glides across the glass, scoring the surface. The scrap is broken away and the piece checked against the cut line. the next piece, over and over. Apprentice Sanford Barnett has cut thousands of pieces in the three years he's been working in the craft. Well, the idea in scoring the glass is to scratch a line on the surface, which becomes a weak point that the glass will fracture along. And because glass likes to break in a straight line, you'll have to start at one edge of the piece and continue it all the way across on your cut, else the glass will just break, could break across the piece you're trying to cut. So you'll always continue your, your cut along. The score is made just within the mark on the cut line. 
This allows room for the lead which will be added later. Each piece must be cut with great precision. If the pieces are even slightly oversized, the window will be too large. It is a patient, careful craft. cleanest break you'll get by snapping the glass, by grasping it between your thumbs along the score line and snapping down, and that will give you a nice perpendicular break. Although, if you're trying to break a long curve, you may have to tap the glass in order to, to get it to break along that curved line. It's like anything else. It's seems very difficult at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's, it's quite simple. On many pieces, the designer adds detail and shading by a process called painting. This is the application of a black oxide which will be fired into the glass to become part of the glass itself. When all the pieces are cut and the painting completed, the assembly process begins. This is Master Craftsman Cecil Brucey, who came to this country from Ireland 20 years ago. He proceeds in his work almost exactly as a worker of the Middle Ages did. The techniques have gone fundamentally unchanged in 700 years. Now the cutting of lead must be done with a very, very sharp knife. There's a, a precise way of holding this knife so that you bear down without damaging the face of the lead. You must wiggle your knife a little so that you go through the face and then you can bear down on the lead and go straight through. It is a bit like tailor fitting a suit, each piece assembled individually by hand and eye. No machines are used. It is not physically difficult work, but patience and attention to detail are essential. precisely when each piece of glass is fitted into the into the lead the next piece must be fitted in exactly and then when you're cutting your lead to join these leads together they must fit together very accurately if they do not do that when you start soldering your panel you will not be able to float your solder on properly
All the pieces of glass are fitted and the lead cut. Preparation for the soldering begins. Each joint is fluxed with acid to make the solder flow cleanly. The solder unifies the panel into a single structure, giving it strength. Well, soldering is a very, very, another very precise step in all the steps towards the finished project. The soldering iron must be at the right temperature. You must hold the soldering iron the right way and you must roll on the solder onto the lead. Float it on, move it round, not rapidly, but just very surely, with a very gentle touch. As a matter of fact, you really want to caress the lead when you use the soldering iron. And in that way you get a very, very fine, delicate finish. No raised portions. frustrating type of craft at all. It's a very exhilarating craft. When you know the design is good, when you know it's being colored well, you have a great sense of anticipation. When you lay that window up and just roll it down off the bench the first time round and hold it up to the light, that is beautiful. You get a great sense of satisfaction. is flat. Dorothy Close is one designer who works in three dimensions. Her lampshades are illuminated sculptures, exercises in the use of subtle color and texture. Her work is among the best being done today. The process is somewhat similar to window construction. The pieces of glass are cut to a pattern, then they are foiled with copper and fitted onto a form, then they are soldered. I probably do things wrong from a traditional standpoint. I like to turn the glass so that I can see or touch the textural surface so long as this does not interfere with too much transmission of light. Sometimes if I want it to twinkle or show some changes in the light itself, then I put it with one surface down, and if I just want to see texture, I turn the glass in the opposite direction.
job of soldering from the very beginning to spot tack it to hold the shape of the mold and then to run over it to cover the overall line. Uh, it's far easier to do a good job inch by inch than it is to come back and retrace your steps. it because I think of it as a contained bit of light. I think in a few years time it may be a whole range of illuminated sculptures rather than lights for over the table. glass is a unique way of seeing, a feast of color and contrast, of texture and form. There is no other art form quite like it. Stained glass has been called a dead art, a lost craft, but it is alive and prospering in the work of a growing body of artists and craftsmen. A thousand years of heritage is maintained and honored by those who continue to paint with light.